This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. This is a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. What's up, everybody? Welcome to DBL. Happy Tuesday. What's up, brother? Happy Tuesday. Yeah. I'm just straightening out my little guy here. You know yeah. what I mean? What yeah. little guy? Yeah. Pocket, pocket square. Jam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They start to run And I got you. a little guy in there, too. <laughs> he helps me, my confidence. During <laughs> okay. Nice. Uh, All right. Because okay. you guys don't. All right. Uh, <laughs> Let's get to it. Michael Orr, if you remember, was the subject in the movie The Blind Side. Well, he's suing the family he thought adopted him. Sandra Bullock won an Oscar for the role of Leanne Tui, who took Michael in as a teen. But now Michael is claiming there was no Hollywood ending to this story after all. On Monday, he filed a petition claiming the Tuis never adopted him adopted him. Instead, he claims he was tricked into signing a document, document making them his conservators. Michael also said he never made a cent from the film, but that the Tuies are still profiting from his story. Sean Tuie told a local paper in Memphis that he finally, that he never made any money off the movie. He added that he loves Michael at 37, just like he loved him at 16. Who's lying in this story? And why did it come? Why did it take so long to come out if he was never properly adopted? I have some details first, and then please jump yeah. in. So let me give you full context. So yeah, Michael yeah. claims that in February 2023 is when he finally learned that he was never adopted. Oh, just recently. Just recently. Okay. Now he wants a full accounting. He wants someone to go in there and look into the finances because they're claiming they never made money. Michael was told that the parents made two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for the mo- for the movie, and that the kids got two point five percent of the sales. It's a lot of money. The kids not including him. So he wants that full account. He also uh, is claiming that he um, that the blind side and, and this isn't a claim. This is a fact made three hundred million dollars at the box office and that um, the parents also are saying that they never made a dime from anything from that story, which I believe Erica, you said earlier, she goes on tours speaking about the story. Right. Well, yeah, because you're you are you are benefiting from the story that may not necessarily be 100 percent true. So when we're talking about the they were always referred to as the adopted parents, it turns out that's not true. If it is true that they had him sign um, any paperwork shortly after his 18th birthday without an attorney to uh, essentially make them a conservator. And he ended up with little to nothing from this deal that they uh, assumingly signed on his behalf, that raises a lot of red flags because you know any conservatorship or any paperwork was definitely um, brought to him by an attorney or at least through an attorney's Hmm. office. So an 18 year old with no background in any legal anything, having no one to advocate for him and the people who are supposed to advocate, advocate for him are actually profiting is just like predatory on every level. I don't know the last time that anyone has actually looked into the child welfare system or spoken to someone who's been in and out of child welfare system, but it is a place that gets very primed for people to be taken advantage of our most vulnerable population. And I think that when we think about this, um, a lot of times, a lot of young people of color, specifically males, are looked at because of this boy's at the time, stature and the fact that he's a young black boy, they are adultified in a way that other children are not. So when you look at him, you see an adult, but really he's an 18 year old child who was taken advantage of. And now it's up to his 30 something year old self to advocate retroactively Mm. for his best well-being. You know, I I, I tried to just remove you know, the, all the aesthetics from this, the fact that he played uh, pro ball, the fact that there was a big movie with A-list actors, and just look at what we're looking at. And we could take this story and really fit it in any one of those bad behind the music contracts. Somebody's 18 years old, they're a pop sensation, they're making videos in their mirror, somebody shows up with a contract, and they sign it, and they're making money, and then five, six, seven years later, they say uh, Erica Cobb and the Erica Cobbettes we, we've been on world tours, where's the money? It's the exact same thing. They find these young people that are talented, they give them a limousine, they give them champagne, but there's no money. How do we tell the Jeff Schroeder story, make $300 million from it, and you don't see one cent of that? Right. Yeah. I do How, want to present the other that? side, though. No, you're right. I want to present the other side. Uh, the the parents claim, their names are escaping me, the but Tuies. the, the, the Tuies claim that they had to 
trick him essentially in order to get him into Old Miss because Old Miss would not have accepted him if he weren't part of a family. That to me is a little surprising as a D1, former D1 athlete. I remember having the pick of the litter when it came to whatever school I wanted to go to. My GPA wasn't the highest because of my athletic ability. I. I would be alarmed. I think my red flag, I always like to hear both sides of the story, but my red flag is the fact that uh, an athlete at his level, I believe, was probably recruited by every single NC2A institution, and I don't think he would have needed anything but his athleticism to get him in. Mm, and why Ole Miss? Because, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm open to being wrong, but weren't they a part of the boosters yes. of Ole Miss? Yes, so they wasn't were. this a legacy get to begin with? Mm, well, pipeline, I could actually. be wrong. I could be wrong, but there's a just, lot of other D1 There's schools. a lot of red flags. There's a it lot of red flags. It just doesn't smell right. Yeah. You know? It Something just doesn't. Up. Yeah. It's too it, bad. It's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. It, it, it's heartbreaking for Michael because he made, I looked, and he made over $34 million, give or take. I don't know the exact number. He signed huge contracts with three different teams. He was a top 10 pick, I believe, in the NFL. He was. This isn't about money for him. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Unless there's still conservators. When you say conservator, I, I want to go a little deeper. Does that mean he they controlled his finances when he was in the NFL too? That's a good point. It does, I, we don't know that. Right. So if, it, if that. it goes that deep and then he just found out I wasn't adopted, he looks back and he's like, man, it's not about the money. My whole life was a sham and you guys took advantage of it. And me. to your if, point. From, from what I'm seeing. And to your point, the blind side effect was a very real thing. There were a lot of children who had, um, there was added scrutiny about why certain individuals were all of a sudden attaching these very yeah. talented kids who didn't have anyone yeah. to advocate for right. them. Which is sad, So too. that might be a part of it, too. Yeah, which is uh, sad. All right, let's sneak in one more here. The Golden Bachelor, Gary Turner, made his debut on the Men Tell All episode of The Bachelorette. Last night, Gary, who is 71 year old, he's a widower from Indiana, said he's not aware of all the social media hype around him. Let's watch. You were trending on social media, trending. If, if I knew what that meant, I'm sure I would appreciate it a whole lot more. It's a really good thing, Gary. Th this might be my favorite one of all. Grand Zaddy. Is it good? It's good. OK. I think what I'm, I'm most looking for that first night is for one of those women or several of those women to just have that look in their eye mm. like, oh, gosh. Okay, I found my own grand zaddy. <laughs> See what I did there? I, I do. <laughs> Gary also had everyone in tears as he revealed his wife of 43 years died suddenly of a bacterial infection mm. six years ago, but he said he is ready for love again. Oh my God. Every time I see this guy, he wins me over again. I hope he's the real deal. We me see too. a lot of times like you get these clips and you find out Gary's like, I don't know, got a snake farm, and he did weird things with him. I don't know, whatever. And uh, snake farm. I don't know, whatever. You know what I mean? You find out something weird, and you're like, man, True. Gary, you were my zaddy. Yeah. 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 You're just a weirdo. Yeah. But I hope he's the real deal. I think America's fallen in love with him. Great job on casting. I also think, too, you know, people that have lost a spouse, and I deal with this with my sister, they don't think they're ever going to love again. Mm. And I am hoping that he finds love, because I know that a lot of the viewers watching who may be a widower, um, it's different than a divorce, you know? You're still yeah. mourning the person that you felt as your soulmate. So I just hope that he finds love again. I really do. And hopefully The Bachelor is it. I, that's rare, but hopefully it's it. It is okay, rare. Can but I, Can I do one it? little contrarian out? Oh, it's no. not going to be bad. It's oh, not no. a bad one. No. It's not a bad what? one. Do you find it hard to believe, Erica? Look at me. Do you find it hard to believe that he didn't know what trending meant? No. No? No. Trending. He's 71. I to my dad. TV shows. Uh, like, who would be like. Your dad doesn't know what trending is? No. Really? Oh, Not at all. And, and speaking and of snakes, you're a cold hearted snake. Wow. Because, you because don't play I by rules. Look to my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I just had a question lies, about exactly. a, a very basic term. He's 71. No. He's 71. Al, 71. listen, when the other shoe drops, which it always does on social media, yes. and something dirty comes up about Gary, you could be like, I told yeah. you. That's make true. Erica I told you. Yep. Yeah. Save mm -hmm. the clip. Save yeah. the clip. All right. I hope, I hope you're right, though. Gary. I hope you're right. I, I think he's a good guy. I hope I'm wrong about yeah. proving you right. That's right. We're all confused now. Reality TV star Casey King is sharing how he lost nearly wow. 600 pounds, a story you definitely don't want to miss. And Margot Robbie's big payday for the Barbie movie. We're talking about it next.
I don't know what happened in life that made me so bitter. <laughs> <laughs> but there's all the other shoe always drops. Well, it's, Gary, it's, everybody it's loves him. Every, whenever, whenever anyone's up on a pedestal, the world wants to come and chop him That's down. So very true. when it's Gary's very up true. right now, when that show starts, someone from high school is gonna come out of the woodworks and be like, Gary was a dirty old dog. I don't know, Wait, behind who, the drive-in movie theater, been, and loved, there goes Gary. Who's been beloved their whole career? No, like who's led? Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks really hasn't had any scandals. I mean, there's a one clean. where like they were trying to get on him because they said he yelled at that one guy, but that was nothing. That was recently. That They're was just trying nothing. to make something that fell. But there's always people are always trying to tear right. people down. Yeah, especially when you don't have a mark on your record. Like once you've got one, people aren't trying to go after Flavor Flav, like because he's had trip ups. But like if you've never had any, I think Tom Hanks. I, I definitely accept that one. You know what? You know who else they try hard to bring down? Uh, Chris Pratt. Oh, like yeah. he's not a good dad because uh, he's kind of yeah. faith based, and yeah. he never really comes out and says well, what religion is or what weird, his politics. But see, that's also the difference. It's like people who come out and fight it, like. But he doesn't come have, out at right. all. Right. It's like you gotta, you, you gotta just like let it ride. You and, gotta let it ride. And by it's the like, way, we were doing the billion dollar movies yesterday. He's in three billion dollar movies. Chris Pratt is. That's all I would like. Super, yeah. I would just, so it's like, people want to tear him down, but he doesn't say anything. He just keeps making billion dollar movies. I would just subtweet well, everybody that wrote something about me. That's enough money to uh, insulate yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just yes. don't talk and screw it up. But he's always yeah. talking about fishing with his kids and stuff Sailor? on his farm. Yeah. And I don't know. He seems like a good guy. Welcome back to DBL. Barbie is officially a billion dollar movie. I gotta be honest, I didn't see that coming and it's star Margo, Margot Robbie is also getting a piece of that plastic pie. According to Variety, Margot stands to make $50 million as a star and producer of the film. So far, Barbie has made $1.18 billion globally and counting. Is that good? I think that's good. good. And you're in the billion dollar list. Ooh. Billion dollar boys club, women's club, yeah, they club. Yeah, I was going to say, don't forget the girls too. Okay, yes. sorry, I'll take a week off. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's a billion dollar girls club. Uh, with uh, Martha Stewart. Who else? Rihanna. 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 Almost, um, almost Beyonce. Is she? Beyonce. Beyonce. Is she I said billion dollar boys club because uh, what's his name? That His branding mm -hmm. line. Oh, was that him? Pharrell, remember he's got billion dollar, oh, the billion dollar yeah. boys oh, club. the billionaire it? boys club. Isn't it something like that? Yeah, that's why. And I don't forget, out. I'm sure we're gonna and have I'm, a Barbie two coming out. Oh, that's definitely gonna happen. So, There's already talks. Yeah, she might be in the two billion dollar I think it's club. gonna be more about Ken. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Do you well, think that's gonna? It's, it's finally time for Ken to, you know, have some oomph and lead I wonder, by I, example I wonder what you'll and say. have some, ass be assertive. If Ryan Gosling wins uh, best male supporting actor in Margot doesn't I hope he does. Anything. I love him. I'm just saying uh, publicly, I wonder how okay. that's. I will watch the movie and then give my sentiment. I've not watched it yet. All right. Well, good on her. Erica, oh. have you seen the movie? I have not. Okay. Have you seen the movie? I haven't. I'm a sexist, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, everybody. It is a joke. Well, it doesn't matter. Speaking of Barbie, <laughs> Halle Berry. Allie. Dang, Halle Berry celebrated her 57th birthday at the World of Barbie exhibit in LA. Miss. Halle posted these pictures oh, from the traveling exhibit and also revealed her 15-year-old daughter, Nala, is taller than she is. That's How Nala? She's tall. Oh, my she's in She's in heels, but yes, yeah, she's tall. And Haley's bo longtime boyfriend, Van Hunt, made an appearance at the thing, too. <laughs> Those are some very strange What is Manhunt doing? Van, Van Hunt. Van, Van, Van Hunt. Hunt. <laughs> what is Van Hunt doing? Who's Van we Hunt? can't do the story after you call him Man Hunt. <laughs> the story's over. Let's say Van Hunt. I will say this. As a parent, I, I uh, already have one child that's taller than me. And my, uh, my best friend, one of my best friends that lives next to my ex-wife, both his sons are taller than me. And it's a moment, Jeff. It's a moment when you, your kids can yeah. look down on you. It's very strange. What are you going to so, do when Lawson's taller than you? That'd be great. Yeah. Like, they're already, it's like kind of 
we got his haircut in like just overnight, he looked like a little boy. He you looks, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. They, it, it goes from being like a boy to a with young man. Oh, yeah. 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 It does. It's you weird. It. Sophie lost both her top teeth, and now she thinks she's like a kid, and the attitude came with it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Trying to help him with homework yesterday. I'm like, dude, the time is just flying. I know. <sighs> That was a good. That was a good Van Hunt story. All right, <laughs> coming up on DBL, Casey King from the TV show Family by the Ton is sharing his inspirational journey to losing nearly 600 pounds. That's coming up next. A Fulton County grand jury returned a true bill of indictment. Georgia prosecutors indicted former President Donald Trump on charges of conspiracy and racketeering in connection to attempts to overturn the 2020 election. This is the former president's second indictment in state court. And soon after the case was unsealed, some people began searching online about whether Trump could pardon himself in the state cases if he's reelected as president. So let's verify. Our sources are the Georgia State Board of Pardons and Paroles, Georgia State Law, the Georgia Justice Project, the New York State Constitution, and the New York Executive Clemency Bureau. The U.S. Constitution gives the president broad power to issue pardons in offenses against the United States, which legal experts say only refers to federal convictions, and it's a legal gray area whether presidents could pardon themselves. When it comes to state charges, each state has its own rules. In Georgia, the pardon process is overseen by the Board of Pardons and Paroles. The five-member board is appointed by the governor, but works as an independent agency. The state requires convicts complete at least five years of their sentence and not have any pending charges against them before requesting a pardon. The board then conducts an investigation and then votes whether to grant a pardon. In New York, the governor has the sole authority to issue pardons. She can also unilaterally grant a commutation, which reduces a person's sentence if they've served at least half of their minimum prison term and were sentenced to more than a year in prison. So, no, Trump cannot pardon himself in state cases if he's reelected. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. Our next guest spent the majority of his life overweight and thought he would eat himself to death. But a wake-up call forced him to change his life. Earlier, we spoke with Casey King. Weight has always kind of been this thing that I had, like, looming over me since I was born. And then after high school, I was just a fat guy and then got bigger and bigger and bigger. At my heaviest, I was 823 pounds. Casey decided to make a change in his life after the birth of his nephew and a warning from his doctor. You're gonna die, your life is gonna end. I mean, life sucks, but I didn't want it to end. The way I lost weight was eating a little better, drinking a little better, and then increasing my activity level, but also getting better sleep. Then he was presented an opportunity to join a TLC show to help him lose more weight. It would involve getting stomach surgery and then they would just kind of like document your weight loss. Casey continued to lose weight after being on the show. Dieting a lot more, eating a lot less. I got hardcore into hiking and like walking. Someone called me cute and I was like, oh my God, imagine if I just kept losing weight. After losing nearly 600 pounds, Casey is ready to live the life he once dreamed of. I didn't have a life and now I don't stop living. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Casey joins us live right now to tell us more about his weight loss journey. Casey, you said your weight was something you've dealt with since you were born. So what led to your weight gain? Uh, I never really like felt like a part of uh, normal people. I was always chubby or like overweight. Uh, I probably lacked some like social and like developmental skills. And then just like boredom, uh, being alone and then coping with it all emotionally and just eating a lot. Yeah. 
Case, I, you know, I got to say something, break the fourth wall here. I was watching your face while we were watching that package, and you were even getting a little emotional about it. So were we. We're so proud of you, man. Yeah, we are. You were 823 pounds at your heaviest. I know this sounds like a weird question, but looking back, do you have any regrets for letting yourself get that heavy? So, like... You can't really appreciate where you are now if you don't appreciate or look, and look forward to where you like came from. I don't. I would never tell someone as good advice to get to that kind of size or anything. But like the person I am today, who I like a lot, is because of who I was back then mm. and my whole journey and like process of becoming who I am today, which I have some things to work on. I'm only me today because of who I was and where I came from. And you have to learn to like appreciate your past to appreciate like where you are now. That is that makes beautiful. Sense. In any journey, totally makes sense, yes. Absolutely. I'm just, you know, and I don't wanna go off on a tangent here, but I saw, you know, that you're holding back a lot of emotion. It makes me wonder, have you taken time to really appreciate the hard work you've put in? Great because question. you were kind of turning your head a little bit. And I want you to stare at yourself, brother. You have done an incredible amount of work. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. You have to face that and accept that, accept the positive too. We're really proud of you here. We're all feeling you, man. I appreciate it. I, it's it's a hard thing. I mean, I I probably should do some therapy and like counseling and work through a lot of things. I'm an emotional guy. Uh, Good. I don't I don't diminish anything other people have done because of like the crazy amount of weight I've lost. It's not an everyday thing, but just I just wanted to like live. Casey, yeah. thank you so much for sharing your story with us on DBL really today. Great. To our viewers, I know you want to. You can follow Casey on Instagram. His name is underscore Casey King underscore. You can also follow him on YouTube. I think counseling. I, I therapy, bet you there's going to be some cute comments on. I think there will be. I think there's going to be some mingling. There we go. DBL Nation. We'll be right back. Yeah. Thanks you so awesome, much. Man. Thanks, Thanks buddy. Casey. Many of us regularly get deliveries on our doorstep, and they're usually boxes filled with things you're expecting. One Verify viewer texted us to ask what to do if you get a package addressed to you containing something you never ordered. So let's verify. Is it legal to keep unsolicited packages if it has your name and address? Our sources are the US Postal Service, United Parcel Service, the Federal Trade Commission, and the Better Business Bureau. While this scenario of unsolicited deliveries may seem far-fetched, the Postal Service says it does happen. The most common examples are when a company or charity sends you a gift, like return address labels or stickers, in the hope that you'll buy from them or donate. All of our sources say you're under no obligation to do so. You're legally entitled to keep the gift, and the sender isn't allowed to send you a bill later. You can also mark it as return to sender, and the shipping company will send it back free of charge. So, yes, it is legal to keep unsolicited packages if it has your name and address. The BBB says there are a few instances when you should be concerned about unsolicited packages, like if you're getting multiple packages without a return address. This could mean you're inadvertently part of what's called a brushing scam. This is when online sellers ship you an item and then use your name to write fake reviews. If this happens, notify the retailer and check your accounts with them to make sure someone isn't using your account to post reviews. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Are you skeptical of headlines and what you see on social media? We are too. The Verify newsletter helps you distinguish between true and false information by answering your questions. It provides fast facts on trending topics, spotlights major stories, and even includes a daily fun fact for all those trivia buffs out there. Get Verify's fast facts delivered every weekday to your email inbox. Go to verifythis.com slash email to check it out. Verify here with your fast fact. This viral video with more than a million views claims to show three UFOs flying over New Mexico and asks, do you believe the footage? So let's verify. Is this video real? These are our sources. 
Verify took a few frames from the viral video and ran them through a reverse image search. This led us to both TikTok and Instagram videos posted on July 31st by user IcemanFox1, with the caption, filmed with Digital Combat Simulator. DCS is a video game that offers realistic simulations of aircraft and other military equipment. Iceman Fox One's profile says they regularly post realistic DCS videos and confirmed in an email to verify that the viral video was generated using DCS. So no, this video claiming to show UFOs in the sky over New Mexico is not real. With your fast fact, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. We've got some great products from our friends at Side Deal. Check them out. Steph, what do you have for us today? Let's get shopping. Hey, Tori. Hi, DBL Nation. I am so excited to show you what we've got today. It's fabulous. Get ready to shop. Check out this. First up today, we have got the Beats Flex Wireless Earphones. Ooh. So this deal includes one pair of earbuds available in two colors. We have got smoky gray and black. And normally, they are $70. Ooh. Tori, we have got them, however, for $39.99. That's saving 43%. Now, next up today, we've got the self-cleaning bidet attachment by Dude Product. Oh my gosh, I love these. This deal includes one bidet available in black or white, and installation is super simple, as is its use. This has got <laughs> adjustable pressure and self-cleaning nozzle. So normally, this is $111. No, that's too much. We've got it for just $24.99. I'll take it. That's saving 77%. We've also got the six-pack power practical motion sensor light. So this deal includes six light strips, motion sensor, and one remote. Normally, this is $75. Ooh. We got it for just $19.99. That's saving 71%. And then check out this as well. This is lovely. This is the two-pack new lasting hair vibrant scalp treatment with a laster plex. Oh wow. So this deal includes two scalp treatments. This formula works to help replenish the elastin your scalp loses every day for healthier, more vibrant hair. And normally these are $129 oh, each. Wow. Whoa. Tori, we, however, have got a two-pack for $29.99. That's saving you guys 88%. Head on over to SideDeal.com to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices. You can even visit SideDeal.com right on your smartphone. Steph, thank you so, so much. Great deals. What was your guys' favorite? <laughs> <laughs> everyone was on their phones during the break. I was too. I was texting my mom. Okay, but everyone well, was down Jeff, like now this. now you have to say yours. Because I use a lot of side deal stuff. Me too. Which one specifically? Oh, we're out of time. Oh, we'll see you guys Jeff, tomorrow. Same time, same place.